The New Orleans Saints may have found the latest NFL loophole in order to maximize their game day roster. We got all that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. is good who that nation and who that family welcome into another episode of locked on saints your daily podcast covering your favorite team the new orleans saints part of locked on podcast network your team every day thanks so much as always for making locked on saints your first listen of the day every day and all you everydayers out there and don't forget you can subscribe and follow for free on youtube or wherever you get your podcast so you never miss the latest episodes. And if you want to keep the conversation going one on one with me, take part in our exclusive film studies, Q and A's, inside information, early access, and much more, you can head over to joinsubtext.com slash locked on saints to join a community I would love for you to be a part of. As always, I am your host, Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson Nola on your favorite social media, your New Orleans Saints expert credential member of the media. You can find me as a senior writer and reporter over at Saints News Network, Sports Illustrated's fan nation site covering the New Orleans Saints every Tuesday on the Locked on NFL podcast and here with you every single Monday through Friday on Locked on Saints. Today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends at Bird Dogs. Head over to birddogs.com slash Locked on NFL or use the promo code Locked on NFL to get a free water bottle with your next purchase. That is birddogs.com slash Locked on NFL. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you that. On today's episode of Locked on Saints, the New Orleans Saints name, there's seven captains, two special teams, two offense, three on defense. We'll go over who they are, who's to, who are the first timers, and of course, why this is uh, really important for the New Orleans Saints. We're also going to take a look at Marshall and Lattimore returning to practice. We saw him there on Monday. He wasn't the only return, but he certainly was the biggest. We'll discuss the impact of Marshall and Lattimore being back out on the field week one, as it looks like it's trending that way. But first, I want to start off with a new sneaky loophole, 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 loophole that the New Orleans Saints are finding a way to take advantage of. And yeah, it all comes down to the brand new third quarterback emergency quarterback rule. And the New Orleans Saints, just to give you the big takeaway here first, and I'll explain what the quarterback rule is a little bit more in depth and how they're taking advantage of it. But the New Orleans Saints are using none other than Taysom Hill to potentially take advantage of what the QB3 loophole has provided in the NFL, which is effectively an extra roster spot on game day. So for those of you that need a little bit of a refresher or would like a little bit of a refresher on the third QB rule, it's pretty simple. You can go into every game day with a third quarterback that's designated as your emergency quarterback. As an emergency quarterback, you cannot come out on the field and do anything else in terms of non-quarterback activity. Um, You can warm up, you can get a communication headset, you can get all that stuff, but you can only go in the game at the quarterback position if your QB1 and QB2 that precede you are off the field for injury purposes only. It cannot be a situation to where one of the quarterbacks has an equipment issue, can't be a situation to where one of the quarterbacks is pulled on a coach's decision, and and it goes for both quarterbacks, QB1 and QB2. So let's say QB1 gets injured. And then your QB2 goes out, plays poorly, you pull QB2, and then you want to put in your emergency quarterback, you can't do that, or vice versa. QB1 plays poorly, you pull QB1, you put put in QB2, QB2 gets injured, then you can put in QB3, your emergency quarterback. No, it has to be that both the quarterbacks are off the field because of injury. If that happens in QB1 or QB2, I'm just using general references right now because I don't want to use any names, but QB1, QB2... Um, are off the field for injury purposes, you put in your emergency quarterback, and then let's say QB2 gets cleared by the medical staff to return to the field, you can then put QB2 back out on the field. So basically, it's an emergency quarterback only if you can't play QB1, QB2 due to injury and know they can't do anything else. So while you can't designate Taysom Hill as your emergency quarterback three because of the fact that he'll be doing many other things out on the field to be catching passes, running, throwing blocks, playing special teams, all of those things. And of course, playing quarterback himself. It doesn't mean that you can't list him as a quarterback and list another quarterback as your emergency QB3. And that might be what the New Orleans Saints are at least prepping themselves to be able to do. They changed uh, Taysom Hill's designation from tight end 
to quarterback. Now, according to uh, Dennis Allen, this decision was made because they want the, you look at how many snaps Taysom Hill has played. He played nearly 50% of his snaps at quarterback last season. So they're designating him as a quarterback makes perfect sense, right? But this also gives them a little bit of roster flexibility because they could, and here's the little wrinkle that I'll introduce to you. They could have Derek Carr go into a game designated as QB1, of course. They could then designate Taysom Hill as QB2, still be able to use him all over the place because he's QB2. He's not QB3. He's not the emergency guy who can't be used anywhere else. He would be the second quarterback. And then they could have Jameis Winston be the emergency third quarterback and then have Jake Hayner inactive for that day. Why would you do this? Because this allows you to have Taysom Hill on the field plus your QB3, right? Your emergency QB3. So three quarterbacks. And then an extra roster spot that you're still trying to fill out, or you would have four quarterbacks, one of which being your QB3. So that takes away a number for you, because no matter what, Taysom Hill is going to be on the field. But this ends up reducing a situation because Jameis in that instance would be your 47th player, opening up a 46th spot for you to still keep because Taysom Hill's already on the field as your QB2 or already active that day as your QB2. And you can make Jake Hayner inactive while he's still learning the team, learning the offense, all those other things. This allows you that extra roster spot, which is really, really helpful if you're the New Orleans Saints and you want to maximize the amount of talent that you're putting on the field. Now, you could have 46 players on the field, including Jameis Winston and, excuse me, including Taysom Hill and have an emergency quarterback, as opposed to 46 players on the field which include Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston, and then an emergency quarterback. So that's where the one number can make all the difference. The Saints could take advantage of this. Doesn't mean that they have to week one, doesn't mean that they have to at any point, but this is something that they could do. Now, the one tricky thing that it does is that it does require the New Orleans Saints, if something were to happen with Derek Carr, it requires you to use Taysom Hill as your QB2, as opposed to Jameis Winston. You couldn't go to Jameis unless both Derek Carr and Taysom Hill were off the field due to injury. The good news, though, is that I don't know that the New Orleans Saints would mind that. They they would be perfectly comfortable having Taysom Hill go out there and be that dual threat quarterback, run a lot of that quarterback power offense, run a lot of that clock running offense to try to get through the game, especially if you have the lead. So that's not a bad scenario for the New Orleans Saints. And of course, What the Saints already know is that when Taysom Hill touches the ball a certain amount of times, when he takes a certain amount of QB snaps, they tend to win games. That's just the truth. And so this gives you the opportunity to be able to say, okay, Taysom Hill's on the field, using Taysom Hill all over the place. He's the backup QB too, because we want to put the ball in his hands anyway, one way or another. But then you get an extra roster spot plus the QB3, as opposed to that extra roster spot being that other QB2 while Taysom Hill is in the tight end room, and then you use up your emergency third quarterback on Jake Hayner or whomever uh, toward the, you know, throughout the rest of the season. So the Saints can kind of mix and match this. And I would expect to see them do a little bit of both. Go into games where Jameis Winston is QB2 and Jake Hayner is the emergency third quarterback, but then also go into games where Taysom Hill is QB2 and Jameis Winston is the emergency third quarterback, which gives them that extra spot to be able to have an extra offensive lineman, extra defensive lineman, extra wide receiver, extra cornerback, whatever it is that they wanted to use to maximize their roster amount on game day. And if you need another game day explainer in terms of how the rosters work, make sure you go back uh, to that would be Monday's episode where we broke down the differences between the preseason and the regular season. What's the difference between a game day roster, active roster? That's all covered in that episode. But this QB3 rule is a way for the New Orleans Saints, especially with Taysom Hill, who can do a whole load of things be able to maximize their roster a little bit on their 46 slash 47 slash 49 man game roster. So you want to check that out. That's there for you. But this is really, really interesting and a really, really, I think, good choice by the New Orleans Saints to have themselves prepared to do this should they decide. Coming up next, Marshawn Lattimore returned to practice. And while he wasn't the only return, he sure is the most important. Why? We're going to break it all down as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends at Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs are the simply most comfortable clothes you're ever going to own. Whether you're looking for some workout shorts, maybe you're looking for some khaki shorts that you could wear for a workout, but also could wear out for the night, but could also probably wear to work these days. There's so much that you would be able to do 
uh, and they're a very versatile pant. They are, you know, the sweat wicking fabric, all this stuff, the cloud knit fabric that you don't have to worry about sweating through, all that super comfortable, keeps it cool for you. I'm wearing the joggers right now, especially as it starts to cool down here in New Orleans. It's been great to have something that's so versatile that you can work out in, but then also deal with the heat in, but then also keeps you a little bit warm too when you need it. So they've been awesome. You want to go check them out for yourself, head over to birddogs.com slash locked on NFL and use promo code locked on NFL. You're going to get a free water bottle with any purchase. Head over to birddogs.com slash locked on NFL. Use promo code locked on NFL today. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you that. Right, family, continuing on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. New Orleans Saints saw a huge return to their practice field on Monday with Marshawn Lattimore. What kind of impact will he have for this team? And he wasn't the only return. How could that other return also end up impacting New Orleans? We got that coming up for you as we continue on today. We appreciate you. All you everyday is out there making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Make sure you go and check out that Locked on NFL Ultimate Season Preview. I demolished our NFC South. Uh, opponents, uh, probably kind of in concert and with the help of Julian Council of the Carolina Panthers, of Locked On Panthers. He and I were kind of on the same page on a lot of things. We're going to check it out. Um, 32 teams all represented insight from our national insiders as well as, of course, a look through uh, the every single division and more. So go check it out on the Locked On NFL YouTube page or wherever you get your podcast. So uh, on Monday, we got back out to practice for New Orleans. They are off today, but then we get into the regular season schedule, most of fit, most kind of officially tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday practices with injury reports, all that stuff. We'll do daily episodes updating you on the injury report, as well as some short form content that's going to be able to help help you out there as well. So um, for New Orleans, the biggest return to the field for them on Monday came in the form of number 23, Marshall Lattimore back out there. Marshall Lattimore had been in and out of practice uh, throughout the last couple of weeks since the joint practices with the Los Angeles Chargers. During that second day of the two joint practices, he dealt with a knee injury that included some swelling, some medication, things like that. Uh, We saw him come back at one point, do some position drills, but then leave a few weeks ago or a week or so ago. And then today we saw him effectively return. Uh, I'm not going to say in full. Dennis Allen said that he was limited in today's practice. They'll give an, an official participation designation on that on Wednesday when we get into injury reports and all that stuff. Uh, But it was still good to see Marshawn Lattimore out there. We saw him run. We saw him do individual drills. We saw him do uh, stretch, all those other things. We don't, unlike unlike the preseason, during the regular season, we don't get to see team drills and stuff like that. So we don't know how much he participated there. But if he was limited, then maybe it was just kind of a watching off to the side, doing some mental reps kind of stuff. Uh, during that time, that would be my estimation, but we we don't really know that for sure. Uh, so when it comes to Marshawn, though, it, it's huge to have him trending back to being out on the field in week one. The New Orleans Saints made a big move in moving on from Bradley Roby, who I know plays in the slot, but this still has an impact on the entire secondary as a whole. The Saints can now go into the beginning of their season in week one with Marshawn Lattimore, Paulson Adebo on the outside, and Alante Taylor in the slot with Marcus May and Tyron Matthew as their safeties. This would be their intended starting five. Their intended starting five last year, as you know, did not take a single snap together. That all could change the very first defensive snap of 2023. And that would be huge for this New Orleans Saints team. They're going to go up against, yes, a very good run game. Derrick Henry, Tajay Spears. Tajay Spears returning to New Orleans, maybe a little bit of a revenge factor for him. He was very open about the fact that he wanted to be drafted by the New Orleans Saints. But outside of the running backs, you still have a really good passing attack there. Ryan Tannehill can deliver passes and put the ball where it needs to be placed in order for wide receivers to be able to make a play on it. And you've got two big bodied, very physical, high, you know, large catch radius uh, wide receivers in DeAndre Hopkins and now Traylon Burks, who are going to be a part of that offense as well. So there's a lot of good stuff that the Tennessee Titans can do. And there's a lot of stuff that the New Orleans Saints will need to be able to defend against over on that side of the ball. It's a big test for this New Orleans Saints defense to open up the season, a good barometer for where they are, not necessarily where they'll end the season, right? But it'll be a good barometer for where they are, where they need to improve or where they're solid, where they're better than expected, whatever it might be. Saints are going to learn on Sunday. Absolutely no doubt about that. And so having Marshawn Lattimore back for you, a guy that missed 10 games last season with a weird injury, the lacerated kidney injury that he suffered against the Seattle Seahawks, Saints going four and six over the course of those 10 games, they'd love to have him out on the field. And it looks like it's trending that way, which is huge for New Orleans. And as we mentioned here on the show before, 
Not only does having Marshawn Lattimore help you in coverage, it helps you in the perimeter run game as well because he's a very willing tackler, along with Paul Sinadibo and Alante Taylor, who loves to hit. He loves to tackle. So you're going to have three very solid perimeter run defenders, or let's say run defenders at cornerback, that will be able to help out in the run game as well, which is going to be vital, especially with guys like Derrick Henry and Tajay Spears who can catch the edge and have that breakaway speed downfield. Let's not underestimate Derrick Henry's speed just because of his size. So they'll be very busy, uh, but it's going to be a lot better for this New Orleans Saints defense if Marshall Lattimore is on the field rather than if it isn't, or rather than if he isn't, excuse me. Uh, so we'll get a better idea of the way that his um, sort of participation is tracking throughout the rest of the week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's limited Wednesday and Thursday, and then maybe elevates to full on uh, Friday, and even is still listed as questionable going into um, Sunday's game. Uh, that would not surprise me at all. It's, there's a little bit of gamesmanship to that. You can't use the probable designation anymore. That happened years ago. So questionable now kind of has a range of degree in terms of what it means. Questionable as in, you know, with a question being, when will we announce that he plays versus questionable being, hey, it won't be until game time that we know for sure that he's going to play because it's questionable whether or not he'll play. So it kind of has this range that it exists now without that probable designation. Um, so expect, I would expect to see him be questionable coming out of Friday and in Friday's injury report, but maybe, just maybe, uh, he practices in full enough that they just kind of say, okay, no, he's in, he's without designation. Um, the Saints also saw another return on Monday that was offensive lineman Landon Young. Landon Young, they cross-trained at guard this offseason. He struggled a bit there, but he's been pretty solid during his time. He's had ups and downs, of course, but he's been pretty solid uh, during his time at both tackle positions. So it's great to see uh, him back, especially without a uh, real formal tackle on the roster behind um, uh, Ryan Ramchek over on the right side. Storm Norton is on the practice squad. But to get Landon Young back in there and have him be the guy that's backing up Ryan Ramchek, that's a good uh, situation for you to be in. Uh, we don't know yet if it's going to be Andrus Pete or James Hurst starting at left guard, but we're going to get a better idea of that on Wednesday. I'm just going to straight up ask on Wednesday too and see what kind of answer we get. I'd be surprised if they give you know a straight up answer on that one because again, gamesmanship, not wanting to give away too much. I get it, but it's worth asking. Uh, so I'll even ask about it on Wednesday, but. The offensive line is a spot that we're going to continue to watch over the course of this season because you're going to see some of the backup guys throughout the year. There's going to be injuries on the offensive line. So seeing a guy like Landon Young, who's a little bit more of a proven commodity as a backup, somebody that knows the system, somebody the Saints are very comfortable with, I think that's a great piece of news for New Orleans. Uh, the last player that I'll mention, or last couple of players that I'll mention that we definitely want to watch Wednesday and Thursday are going to be running back Kendra Miller, as well as, of course, safety JT Gray, both are, are neither rather present. Uh, at Monday's practice, along with Traquan Smith, but we're not surprised by that. Do either of them make their way back to the field Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then potentially end up playing on Sunday? That we'll find out uh, here in just a couple of days because we're here. It's week one, baby. Coming up next, speaking of week one being on the way, the New Orleans Saints selected their captains. Who are they? And why were they some really solid and good choices? And also, how are these choices even made? We're going to take a look at all of it as we continue on and wrap up today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel is the number one sportsbook in all of America, and they are here for you as football kicks off in just two days. Thursday night football right on the way. And right now, if you're a new customer, if you put $5 down on any bet, you're going to get $200 in bonus bets back guaranteed. And even if you're not new, you put down that $5 bet, You'll also get $100 off of NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is absolutely the best time to go and place your bets for the New Orleans Saints, who are favored minus three against the Tennessee Titans at home. Maybe you want to get in on the season opener where the Kansas City Chiefs are favored six and a half points at Arrowhead Stadium going up against the Detroit Lions. So you want to check all that out and much more. Just put $5 down and you can get up to $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. And of course, that $100 off of NFL Sunday tickets, so you can watch your bets play out. So make sure you go and check them out today. You can use them on uh, spreads, player props, those bonus bets, whatever you want. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started and to kick off that NFL season with a deal that you won't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Let's get it. Who Nation wrapping up today's episode of Locked on Saints with a look at 
New Orleans Saints selecting their captains, the guys that are going to lead the team out on the field on Sunday up against the Tennessee Titans. They'll be there for the coin flip. They'll wear the C's on the chest, all of that good stuff. So the Saints selected seven players as their captains, um, four or excuse me, three on defense, two on offense, and then two on special teams. So really, really good stuff here. So here's how or here's who ended up being selected. So on the offensive side, the Saints went with, of course, quarterback uh, Derek Carr. No big surprise there at all. Uh, another one that was really cool and that I love seeing again, right? This is another year to where he gets the opportunity uh, was Eric McCoy, the center. So the New Orleans Saints selected Derek Carr and Eric McCoy as their centers. The two guys that touch the ball every single play on offense. Those are your captains over on the offensive side. On defense, one player from each of the three levels on the defensive line. You know, Cam Jordan is the guy. He has been the guy for a long time going into year 13. And now again, uh, named as a captain at the second level, Demario Davis, a returning captain. And then a guy that we thought was going to be a captain as quickly as last year uh, in his first season, uh, safety Tyron Matthew back in the secondary, also listed as a captain. So DeMar so Cam Jordan, Demario Davis, Tyron Matthew, your three captains on the defensive side. And then on special teams, you got JT Gray, no big surprise there at all. Uh, but also Zach Wood, who just got a brand new contract. He's your long snapper. Uh, a guy that just watched two of his friends leave in Blake Gillikin and Will Lutz, but now getting everything set up with Blake Groupie, as well as, of course, the Thunder from Down Under in Lou Headley. Uh, those three guys, that was a, a that was like me kind of kind of doing a little bit of an Australian accent. But then I remember that I have like Australian people that watch the show and I don't want to be offensive. So instead, I just switched my ERs to an A. That felt like a light and very unoffensive way to do that. Uh, so, so, you know, you've got the two new guys there. And so having a guy like Zach Wood designated for the first time in his career as a captain is really cool. And we've watched the Saints commit to him over and over again, give him new contracts. He just got a new contract this offseason. And then so now he's your only returning guy of that sort of mechanic of long snapper holder, kicker, long snapper punter. Uh, that is consistent now. And so really cool to see him get that additional honor on top of, of course, getting that second contract. Um, Zach Wood said, told us not too long ago that, you know, all 32 long snappers in the NFL are in a, a group text, a group chat together. And uh, it'll be really interesting. I kind of have to go back through and look and see, but I wonder the number of those 32 that are special teams captains on their club and how kind of exclusive that is like do they have a little breakout room for just the just the captain centers or something like that but really really cool stuff uh the guys that are getting this honorary honor for the first time here in new orleans are of course tyron matthew eric mccoy Derek carr who of course is his first year in new orleans and zach wood so they're all first time captains which is really really neat uh cam jordan i mentioned is going into his um 13th season this is his sixth year in a row or excuse me Ninth year, I flip my dyslexia, it doesn't kill, but it does confuse, as David Locke would say. Um, ninth consecutive season as a captain, and then sixth year as well for Demario Davis. Um, and if I recall correctly, I should have written this down, but if I recall correctly, it was the third year for uh for JT Gray. I'm pretty sure that that's right. So great stuff uh for for these players. So so how how does this happen? How are players selected as captains? Well, it's voted on by their teammates. Uh, so uh, you know, everybody kind of votes for their offensive captains. They vote for the defensive captains. They vote for the special teams captains and the seven captains are, are chosen from there. And so it's it's awesome. It's super dope to kind of see like, you know, all of these guys get voted up by their teammates, not just assigned at random by coaches, not just, you know, chosen by select players and stuff like that. It, it does come down a little bit to, you know, to who the team, who the rest of the team looks to when they're in need of something, when they need something, when they want something, who are the leaders of your team, all these other things. And there are all of your designations for that. Over on the offensive side, Derek Carr, Eric McCoy. Over the defensive side, Cam Jordan, Demario Davis, Marshawn Lattimore. Over on special teams, JT Gray, Zach Wood. It all makes sense, right? No big question marks out of all of those. So um, super cool to see all that happen. And, and why is this important? What is the role of a captain? Well, the captain will oftentimes address team, redress the team, right? They'll do the pregame speeches. We saw that kind of get handed down from Demario Davis to um, to uh, Demario Davis, hey, Demario Davis, to Demario Davis, from Drew Brees to Demario Davis, excuse me. Um, and all we've seen Jameis Winston do some pregame speeches as well during the preseason, and, and him as a quarterback, all of that. Uh, but you know, Demario generally handles all of those. Um, you know, Derek Carr, of course, is your your leader in the locker room. Eric McCoy has stepped into a leadership role in the offensive line. 
Tyron Matthew is one of your most experienced defenders over on the team. JT Gray's been the guy for a while. Now Zach Wood gets to step into that role too. And we mentioned Zach Wood being the one guy as a part of that special teams operation going from snap to kick in either of the degrees, right? Kick or kicking or punting, uh, that he's the consistent guy, you know, out of all that. And so really great to see him kind of get acknowledged that way. Um, they would also bring the captains together if there's an issue, right? Let's bring the captains together, discuss how we would want to handle this and then move forward to get it done. That might mean the defensive captains only. That might mean the offensive captains only, special teams captains only, wherever the issue might be, or it might be a bigger thing. Um, I think that there are some times in which they also contribute a little bit to like uniform and, and stuff like that conversations. I know Dennis Allen has said something akin to that before, like, yeah, we'll bring them together and then kind of have that conversation and see where they want to go. Uh, in the midst of him answering a question last year where he was like, yeah, I'm not really a fashion guy when we were asked about the helmets and all that other stuff. Um, so it, it'll be, you know, it's great. It's great to see that. And, and no big surprises there. Uh, you know, there are other guys that could have been named captains, but you can only have so many on the team. And, and every now and then you might see a player move in and be designated as a captain in a situation when they usually aren't, you know, a team a player that's going up against a team that they spent the rest of their career against or something like that. Like, let's say that the New Orleans Saints played against the Kansas City Chiefs in the regular season. They might move Colin Saunders for that game into being a captain for that game, you know, and, and things like that. So you'll see them kind of do all these things. But this is these are the honors, right, of being honored as the season long captains for your squad. And obviously some fantastic decisions made uh, in all of this. All right. So here's here's what we got coming up for you for the rest of the week. Um, so later on today, I'll have another episode around probably 6, 7 p.m. where I'm speaking with uh, Coach Nat from over at NXT, NXT Training. Uh, Coach Nat worked with Tyron Matthew, and he has continued to work with several uh, athletes from Louisiana, Jamar Chase, Christian Fulton, and more uh, around the NFL and he's got a very specific approach into how it is that he goes about all of his training. So I wanted to kind of chat with him about the getting Tyron Matthew back in New Orleans, kind of what the attitude has been around him, all of that, and from him. And we've also got some clips and things like that that, that, we'll, that we'll share throughout all that as well. Uh, and I'm also going to give you a salary cap update. Where are the New Orleans Saints on their salary cap? What could they do with it? All of that. So we'll break all that down later on today. Coming up tomorrow, it's Wednesday. So usually on Wednesday, we're kind of going through a look at looking, you know, starting to preview the team that the Saints are about to play against. That'll be our weekly look. That's what we're going to dive right into on Wednesday. The morning show, all about that. The shorter afternoon show, getting you the injury reports, some short form content, all of that as well. Crossover Thursday, Thursday morning. Again, same thing in the Thursday afternoon, bringing you more on the injury report, short form, all that other stuff. And then Friday's the game plan. What do you got to do to beat the team across from you? We're going to break all of that down on Friday, as well as get you those injury report and injury updates, practice updates, all that Friday afternoon. So a busy week here as we are officially in week one and football, New Orleans Saints football is right around the corner. You're excited and I'm excited with you. So let's get it. I appreciate you as always making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Big thank you to all the everydayers out there. And I thank you very much for making us a part of your day, a part of your routine for saying yes to me and the show. As always, if you see me, please say hi. And if you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on your favorite social media at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how you're mom and them. And trust you, that nation, I'll holla at you.